Good luck. All right, so what opening do we want to play today? Um, so I think this is a fine situation to push this pawn. We've been playing a lot of this cheerful central rook or central rook or however it's called. Playing a lot of that recently. Um, let me try to remember this again. This is where the crazy stuff lies here. Um, so I think I want to play my rook here now. Sooner or later, I'm going to get a game where uh, they actually uh, execute this threat. And I'm going to have to solve it. All right, so... If I close the diagonal, they push this pawn and it sucks. Unless I can push it again and somehow things work. Which seems, if, if I'm reading things correctly, that just doesn't work. Um, I think another possibility is I move my gold. I think this is playable. Another is just I move the king out of harm's way. Looks interesting. <sighs> this infinite sea of possibilities awaits. I think my king belongs out of this mess. While the gold move may be playable, something, I don't know, maybe it is right, but it doesn't feel right. So we're going to play this instead. That's interesting. My OBS is not capturing the entire window. I can see that because there's a yellow line on my monitor that indicates what is being captured. We're missing a little bit, but it's no big deal. Just makes me wonder. Um, uh, so if I move the king again... Then all the exciting bishop exchange lines are less interesting. If I want to push the central pawn, uh, I need to move the gold right now. Otherwise they have time to complete the king in the castle in the boat. And then I can no longer threaten a bishop takes lance sort of thing. Um... Okay, so with this, I declare my intent to push the central foul pawn. Since now I've got this covered in the event that they just do something crazy aggressive here. So now I can push this and save the opening of the diagonal for a later time in this game. And I'm just trusting that if they take this pawn, I'm going to be just fine.
So now the threat is a pawn drop here. And seemingly my best way to combat that would be a pawn drop right there. Which is not comfortable, but um, it's playable. And now I can get him about my business uh, completing my castle. transitional castle. Huh. Okay then. And furthermore, one that denies any possibility of protecting this pawn. That's strange. Um, so now I have to decide, am I going to move my silver up to hit this, which is too slow, and I'll use a gold to protect it, and I'll miss. Or do I open the diagonal immediately? Or do I wait one move before opening it? Um, I'm thinking waiting one move could be best. I'm not really threatening to take the gold if this, well... <sighs> I want to use my generals. It's hard to do. Yeah, opening the center does not gain me anything right now. When in doubt, play a solid move. Um, when in trouble, play a risky move. Okay, this is risky. Because <laughs> uh, my rook can take that. This is amazing. Alright, let's have some fun. You wanted fun, we're going to have fun. I say that in jest. Oh boy. So he's transitioning between castles and opening up lots of lines here. And my rook just wants a piece of this action. So we're going to see where we end up. If silver's exchanged, they could do a silver drop back here. Uh, forking my golden rook, but presently there is no way to exchange silvers. So I've got something resembling a castle. I feel this would be a very fun time for us to see what happens. Okay. They didn't want the most aggressive stuff. I see. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, now, if I take right now, they could do silver takes. Actually, why am I... Well, if they do silver takes, their silver could actually march up here. Yeah, we're going to see some tactics here in just a second, because I'm considering bishop 5-5. Five, five. And their silver wants to both go this way and protect this pawn. So the silver is overworked. So if I do bishop here, if they block with the knight, then I do pawn takes. Gold takes, and I can sack my silver for the knight so I could win the gold and promote. Um, and really it's the promotion and all of that that I'm interested in. I am sacking a bishop there. Is there a less violent way to do this? Maybe. Would it be as fun? No. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the bishop move, they block with the knight, pawn takes, gold takes. Uh, 
Uh, I'm just wishing I had a, another fun way to continue it all. Because my rook seems a little bit prone after it takes the gold at the end of the combination. And they could move this gold up, and I would have what in hand? A silver. How would my promoted rook and silver fight? Well, I have a knight, too, in that point. Um, yeah. Nothing's perfect. I should try to be happy about it. Actually, if I move the gold up, they move the knight. If I had another pawn in hand, which I could get easily by exchanging pawns. Mm. Okay, so they move the knight, pawn takes, gold takes, and then I move this pawn forward. But then they move the gold in the way of my bishop. Um, so maybe I proceed all of this by pushing this pawn, pawn takes, then move the bishop out. They maybe move the rook out of the way and I take the lance. And then they expose their bishop on this diagonal. Just can't win. Just can't win. So if I start with the pawn advance, the point I was trying to make is bishop 5-5, five, five, knight blocks, pawn takes, gold takes, pawn drop on the knight's head. I'm trying to win material. And if the knight moves, I win the rook. Um... So if I push this pawn first, they might just react by moving the rook, and then all these tactics are for naught, because I can't hit the rook anymore. And my rook is not super active. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with my original idea here. That is the first one that I had. And I missed something on move one of the combination. <laughs> Oh, why would I miss something on move one? At any rate, um, it's still okay. I mean, that's not where he wants his rook anyway. So, mission accomplished. Alright, so now what? Now do we just, like, exchange pawns or something? And Yeah. Struggling to find a strong follow-up. Yeah, let's just do this, get it out of the way. My pieces are relatively happy. Of course, I would love to have this file, like my pawn anywhere near the knight. That would be great. Um... That ain't happening. This is why you don't lead an attack with your bishop.
Yeah, this is so strange. I am dooming my knight by moving it forward. It that moving it forward means that it's going to get exchanged either for a pawn or something else. But this is my way of saying I want pieces to get traded. I want a rapid attack even if I can't have one. Right, so if I bring my bishop back here, they it open their bishop. So there's no reason not to go back here instead. So this puts the rook next to the square. If I could get a pawn or a knight on that square, I would be good. Okay, we're going to play cheerful central rook without all the cheer. Yeah, maybe I should have pushed this first. Sooner or later, I will have to move the rook back to deal with this silver exchange threat. Welcome. Yeah, I misread something earlier in the game. I mean, I'm in my normal time pressure situation, but probably should have had a better attack by now. The silver guards everywhere my knight could move to. So I guess I'm provoking them to move their knight the same way. I'm not saying, like, my provocation is a good thing, but... Um... All right. So, yeah, now let's deal with this orc threat. Man, I wish I had an attack there right now. Maybe I have a fork threat that's... No. All of my drops are less scary than his. I can take one tempo to do this. Yeah, so he gets his nice castle, and I'm envious, but... I'll get over it. Um, well, given that this castle doesn't want to be separated, maybe I want to drop pawn 5-5 five five again. With the aim of trying to break up the castle. Maybe I'd move my knight and then do a pawn drop, but that doesn't do anything. Yeah, let's just do the typical thing in this position. Maybe this makes it harder for me to bring my silver forward. 
Maybe there was a, a reason not to play this. I mean, gosh knows what else I should have played, but... Um, I could have tried to attack this edge, except I have my pawn back here again, so... That attack's gonna be pretty slow. Um, could have moved my rook to oppose this rook and then start pushing this pawn. That probably would have been a very good idea. <sighs> I don't know. Okay, this is, like, extremely surprising. There was no need to do that. Which means he wants to do it. I forgot I have the chime countdown. I want to change that to uh, Kitao. Madoka. Alright. Um, my plan A was to just drop another pawn here. It's still not a bad idea. Especially because that's where they want to drop. Um, yeah, I guess that's what we're going to do. Plan B is move the bishop over here and try to promote it. Which doesn't work. Otherwise, I probably would have tried it. Um... He's got two pawns in hand. I still haven't decided if my rook's staying here or moving behind the pawn. Like, not sure where my rook is most likely to be effective. Um, I don't see his threat. I guess we're just going to keep playing. Okay, I see a threat, finally. Um, I say that just in terms of my spotting it. Not necessarily in terms of how fast it is. Oh, clever. That I missed. So now what? Thirty seconds. 
40秒。50秒1234This is my big plan. Let's go big or go home. Okay, somehow I thought it would be okay for me to just ignore him threatening to capture my knight. Now that I'm actually in this situation, I'm having different thoughts. Um, let's just say maybe I want to save the knight after all. Okay. Still this pawn's pinned. I can just take the pawn, but he's going to move over to protect it. This is why I wanted to keep my rook on the center file, so I don't have to think about all these tactics while I'm in Bioni. I guess the alternative is that I just get better at earlier phases of the game and never get in time pressure. But that's not happening anytime soon. Another option is that maybe I just don't play the most aggressive moves I find all the time. <laughs> maybe that would be an option. Gotta think more about that. Okay, this maroons his knight in the middle of the board without compensation. I don't understand it. Um, maybe he's threatening a pawn drop or something like that. Sanjibyo. Okay, I don't know what's more surprising, his move or my move. I just don't know anymore. I thought my sacrificing a piece was going to shake him up and give me at least some time to think. Now I'm pretty sure I just take the pawn, then take the silver, then take the knight, and take the pawn, and take the rook. Just keep taking everything until he responds to one of my moves. I think that's going to be how we do this. So if I take the silver, if he takes my silver, I take a pawn. I think what he didn't count on is knight takes silver, bishop takes pawn. And in this race to see who could come up with the craziest in-between moves, it seems that I've come up with more moves than he has. So I win a pawn or something out of this whole mess. And if rook takes, yeah, if bishop takes. So I expect knight takes silver, I take here to get my bishop to safety. They move the rook away, and I start attacking. Because otherwise we get this exchange. 
where I need to move my silver somewhere. And, oh, my silver's trapped. Well, how about that? So I guess I'm placing the silver here, and they're after they move the rook. And then I exchange the silver for gold, and then I promote my bishop. Or something like that, because my silver still can't go anywhere. That was generous. I mean, no, this stops me from... Well, I wouldn't put a silver on the square anyway, but... Yeah. He's trying to restrict me. Oh, he's trying to prevent a bishop promotion that I was just mentioning. Um, I still think I get my promoted bishop. Pretty sure I still get that. Well, it's just a question of how. No, I was thinking about dropping a silver there. Why did I push my pawn? I thought I saw another way. I don't like this other way anymore. Maybe it's fine. Because I still have like a silver drop 6-4. Or I'm sorry, this is 4-6. I have silver 4-6, and then I can push the pawn and attack the gold. And maybe I don't get a promoted silver, but at least something's promoting. And in this line... Um... Yeah. Lots of stuff happens. Why did I not just do this immediately? Doesn't work, that's why not. What am I doing? No. Gold here, silver drop. They take my bishop, I take their rook. They take my silver, they've won a silver for... No, I take the gold. It's actually materially equal. Of course I'm taking the most complicated path through this maze. There's got to be so many easier ways than what I'm doing. Um, this operation to try to rescue my silver in the middle of the board is not working. It is breaking up his castle slowly and giving me a, a gradual threat of pushing on the center file, but that's not great. Why do I always have to take the most complicated path? Can I get them to commit one more piece over here and then sack my bishop back this way? No, let's just promote this. Let's admit defeat and get something out of it.
Yeah, no, I'm making such... Like, I'm not happy with the way the last ten moves went. I don't know why I'm not thinking clearly. Like, yeah, there's the obvious threat, and I don't have an obvious counter threat. And moving up this silver appears not to do anything. It hits the gold, the gold moves, and then, like, I can't continue pursuit. I forgot that this promotes when it hits the third rank. It's an optional promotion, but boy, do I want it. This piece is more valuable promoted than otherwise, even though, like, the tempo hitting the gold could be feel nice. This is actually a valuable piece. <sighs> so... I mean, regardless of whether it's promoted or not, the threat is to hit the head of the rook and to move the bishop here, forking the golden lance. Um, so those are the ideas here. Another threat is pawn drop here and promoting hitting this gold. So as long as this bishop, or as long as this gold is on this square, I am in possession of a useful tempo. As soon as this gold moves away, for example, taking the pawn, then I have to react to this threat of attack and taking here. So if they take the pawn, I can't just drop this pawn here because then they do knight takes and like everything hangs. It's such a sad attack on my part, because my rook is, like, nowhere to be seen. I want to open this file, but I put my pawn and bishop in front of my rook. So it's going to take at least one, two, three, four, five moves to get my pawn and bishop out of the way for this rook. Amazing. Simply amazing. I mean, this takes the bishop off the board and puts it in the hand if I take. I'm pretty sure I take because I really want that. Yeah, so um one of my many thoughts was that I wanted to nifu here uh which is not great 
30秒 So this is him giving me a free tempo in exchange for him getting his bishop back into his hand. And my big idea, as I mentioned earlier, is to start harassing this rook here and see if I can win this gold. I'm hallucinating so badly. I thought this, well, I mean, the gold could fork my pieces and I could move to hit the rook, so I haven't lost anything. But I didn't even consider this gold fork until after I promoted here. Actually, no, I have both of those pieces covering the square. If they could drop a gold, that would be a different matter, but... um. I could still drop a silver to fork these two, but I could still take it. That'd be a free piece. So many hallucinations. But yeah, the next idea is put something between the rook and the gold so I can win the gold for free. Yep, so they move the gold out of harm's way. And this gives me a free hand to attack them however I so desire. Uh, I guess they're intending a bishop drop here. Thirty <sighs> That's still a fork. If the rook moves down, my gold or my silver can pursue it. So it seems like one shape. I seem to have mastered in the last couple games, at least on stream here. That shape has been the fork. I seem to have demonstrated a mastery of one tactic in Shogi. So as long as I could win every game with a fork, everything is good. But the minute I have to start demonstrating some other tactic, things could get shaky. So I could pursue this up and down for a repetition. I'm in time pressure. One repetition wouldn't hurt. I'm also in a sucky position. I'm going to need a minute to think about this. I can trap the rook. I don't need this gold. But it would cost me my horse to trap it. Are there other ways I could trap it? Not sure.
40秒I'm also tempted to just snipe the lance. I really don't like any of these continuations. I'm. Hmm. Thirty seconds. Forty seconds. Yeah, that's fine. I swear I'm trying to find something better, but I really don't see anything better. Um, I could, like, consider moving my horse to fork the Rook and the Lance. At least that way I gain a tempo out of it all. Um... Chance time. All right, we're going to see where we end up. It's going to be exciting. Thirty-five. I'm getting one step closer to freeing the damn rook. Uh, okay.
30秒40秒Huh, does Shogi have such a thing as a rook sandwich? I think we're about to find out. So my big plan is to push this pawn next, and then push the edge pawn again. And of course my real plan is just move the damn rook. Don't leave it there. I was expecting the rook to go here so my silver could hit it. Um, that did not occur. I think he did not expect this move. So there's two plans here. One is the obvious, just trap the rook, win it for a pawn. The other is, I really want to promote my rook. So we're going to spend some time moving this pawn out of the way. And regardless what outcome we reach here, I've achieved something constructive. On the other hand, it's cost me a couple of tempi to get here, so maybe it's going to hurt a little bit. But threatening to win the rook for a pawn looks like something he's got to respond to. Maybe not. Okay. We can continue play. I just assumed he had to respond to my threat somehow. Maybe there wasn't a way to respond to it. But I thought he would, like, try to attack this pawn again. Maybe he expects knight takes, uh, gold, uh, rook takes instead of silver takes. I don't know. The other possibility is maybe I don't have to take the knight. Yeah, I'll just let him drop the bishop right back here. Maybe that's playable. No, now that he has a gold, it's not playable, so I need to take... can't just allow a bishop to drop here without any consequence. Maybe also he's considering some really crazy mating net that I'm just completely missing. I do have my horse protecting this way, so hopefully it can stop a knight from falling on this square.
三、四、五。Not what I expected. This does not add another piece to the attack. It just uses a piece that's already attacking. Okay, I'll take a rook. Show me the big plan. Probably I should have put dropped a pawn here first. I just got too anxious about all of this. Pawns are surprisingly good defensive pieces. Um, I want that bishop away from here now. Yeah, definitely should have dropped a pawn here much earlier. Definitely should not have let things get this far. Oh well. It's all in the past. My brain is melting trying to read all of this. There's just way too much to read. If I'm dead, I'm already dead. If I'm alive, um, well, we'll see. I guess my point was that it's my opponent's responsibility to prove that I'm lost, not mine. Hmm. Oh, 
Oh, that's checkmate. All right. Yeah, I thought I saw. Anyway. Well played. Yeah, that's unfortunate. All right, let's uh, review the game, I guess. I'm curious. Um, so this is a teaching ladder game. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look through it. I'll have to study this at some point. I've just been doing a ton of coding lately, as usual. That's my typical excuse. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll study Bishop Exchange a bit more soon. Ah! Gotta go for the king. Well, yeah. Suppose we'll figure out how to do that. Um, I mean, you're right. Certainly taking the rook was stupid. But, yeah, I needed to play better defense toward the end. Um, yeah, Cactar is uh, close to promotion. So, I'm not totally sure about this. Uh, yeah. Man. Coming from a chess world, I just want to take all the pieces. Uh, it's hard to resist that. But certainly once it was trapped, there was no need whatsoever to capture that. And there was a very strong need to protect my king. Um, <laughs> well, you did manage to castle. It was scary, but... Yeah, like... I have only half Mino. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I usually don't play half Mino. So, like, this is new territory for me. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I preferred your position here, since uh, your rook is active. Oh, hmm. actually, uh, during the game, I thought uh, uh, I could promote my bishop, but I think I was mistaken. Pretty sure that whatever ideas I had of trying to overwork the silver were just not there. Well... <laughs> Well, I am waiting for you to push this pawn, so we both wait. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's a thing in this opening. Uh, the point of this opening is that the diagonal all eventually opens. Uh, 
and all sorts of fun tactics result. I think that's really the point. So, I mean, maybe there's some way to close it, but I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. I mean, so you're thinking, like, uh, how do I even start to, yeah, yeah, this thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, mm. yeah, I just know, like, this is the rumor I've heard about this opening is that that diagonal always opens and fun, crazy nonsense happens next. Ooh, Pawn Hub is here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we'll progress beyond it. Um, and it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. What was I doing, though? I wonder if I missed anything. I thought I had a tactic. Then suddenly I didn't. And, like, maybe it's my bishop move that was not so bright. Um... Hmm. Maybe if you didn't move the... Well, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, but I missed that rook move. And you're clearly better. So, like... Um, there's got to be something I can do here. Or, like, maybe this opening is just entirely unsound. Okay. Yeah, the more folks who get in this ladder, the better. Um, okay, fine. So I wonder, though, like, there's all kinds of stuff going on here. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe this sort of thing. Maybe I should have tried this. Um, I wonder. Yeah, I never know about this sort of thing. Then I shouldn't play pawn 3 4. Oh, this. Ah! Okay. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I mean, to use my knight, sure, I gotta push that, but using the knight is not the point of the opening. So I did that on move 1 or move 2, but, um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which clearly I shouldn't have here. So, okay, I guess this opening is just fine for both players. I struggle with that kind of concept of an opening, just like nothing exciting is happening. Um, we're suggesting... I was thinking about this. Well, they don't do that then. Um... Here, I guess, I don't know. I did spend some time thinking about this sort of stuff during the game. I don't understand it. Um, it looks interesting. I just, it's a bit much. I guess there's a point to this somewhere. I mean, the, the pawn is beautiful, for sure. 
Um, but like, how do I? Oh well, actually, yeah, I've got this. Never mind. Um, huh. Okay, this is complicated. But if I do this, then that. Um, and if I had a pawn in hand, this would be... No oh. We're thinking I take this. Interesting. I wonder about this. Yeah. Okay, I see. So this would have been very nice. Um, so... Yeah, I guess this is supposed to go this way, then. Okay, so yeah, I was right to spend a ton of time in the opening, but just if I find the right idea. That is nice. Many other positions I considered this, or a couple other positions I considered this. In this particular position, somehow I missed it. Um... Yeah. So now I get this in for free. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, you want to play it there? Okay. I mean, I guess there's sense to that too. So, yeah, I mean, this suddenly looks very good. Oh, now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, maybe this anyway. Yeah, we've had another player join our ladder, and it's been a good result for everyone to have that additional player. Um, oh. Oh, well, this is interesting. So yeah, moving my knight is just not cutting it here. Uh, I'm so accustomed to a, a knight being such a useful piece in chess, and here it's just slow, even in the opening where it spans the entire board in like two moves. And so this knight push is just ridiculous, and faster is bringing up the silver. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess that's all fine. Uh, so, yeah, I just need to stop pushing my knight if I want to win a game. This was cute. Uh, i have to pick that up later. Um, so, yeah, I'm not totally sure. This had some strange tactics. Uh, so, like, there's still this sort of thing. I don't know how long we want to spend looking at that, but... I don't know. A lot of crazy stuff happened. I was glad to get this pawn pushed. Why did I put my rook behind the pawn? The rook doesn't speed up the pawn. It does definitely not speed up my pawn. It's like, this looks interesting. Um, but 
but even here, yeah. I must have missed uh, so many ideas. Um, just figuring out how to open files in Shogi is hard. And pawn drops change that picture quite a lot. Yeah. I'm not sure since you get the same pawn drop to Suji. Like, if I push this, you can still do that. Don't really have a way to force open the file. Like, this knight is just the most useless piece, and it's so strange to me. Yeah, I have no idea. But, I mean, we get the same position, it's just my rook didn't have to be here. Then I did night takes, because I thought I saw something, and I just hallucinated the whole way. And then we had some fun tactics. Um, oh, and then we had a fun end game. Uh, but I don't know how to evaluate it. Um, it's probably best I just hand over the host status, because, like, um, is there anything you would like to review here? <laughs> uh, yeah, because I am just, like, so far beyond confused. I think the repetition would have been fine, just given that I didn't like my position at all. But the way things turned out later in the game, it was actually fine. But then I threw the game super hard. Or at least it felt that way. Like, I needed to spend time defending my king. Yeah, I found some active moves and forgot to defend my king. I was surprised he played so aggressively. But this is our second encounter, so I shouldn't be that surprised. That's just his style to play sharp moves. Um, and I'll do better against him if I can just remember to play a defensive move when it matters most. Yeah. Yeah. After I played it, I realized I meant to drop a silver there. Somehow I thought this might be clever, but it isn't. Like, this just loses a move. This trade surprised me. <laughs> yeah. It does put your bishop in hand, but I get a free tempo. Uh, fair enough. Yeah.
Yeah. I definitely underestimated um, his attacking chances. I relaxed when I finally trapped his rook. And that was like the one moment where I could not afford to relax. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I wonder, when he advanced this gold, maybe I could have pushed my pawn. I didn't think enough about that. <sighs> well, let's just, just push this and then drop the pawn up here. Yep. Allowing uh, your rook to trade for my horse might favor you. I do not know. Um, well, before your rook moves, uh, we can do this. Uh, So I guess I'm talking about, like, somewhere back here. Uh, okay, yeah, so let's follow latest position. So 84, 85, and then this here. Oh, hang on. My board is shared. All right. So let's go there, and if he takes, then this. This would have been very nice. But also, back here, maybe to do some other move, though. This is like... Yeah, I think we were both just in ridiculous time pressure, and neither of us handled it particularly well. Um, it was quite an adventure, but still. like, Yeah, this looks very nice for me. Maybe it's not as nice as I want it. Hmm. Yeah. I guess my pieces can no longer use that square. That is kind of a problem, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, maybe I need to promote on a different square then. Maybe like here. But yeah, it looks like I can make some kind of a threat. Weapons of... Yeah, so I am curious. Um, so, yeah, this is what concerned me just now. I wonder. 
So there's a lot to consider here. Um, point one is if I try this fork, rook takes, and I can't pawn drop. I just don't win material that way. Oh, I can't even pawn drop in front of the rook. Oh, yeah, you're right. This is definitely risky. Yeah, we finally found a way for the gold to attack. Um, and I don't have a counterattack. What a mess. Yeah. And I don't even win the rook. Yeah, this is basically a catastrophe. <laughs> okay, so maybe that's not my best move ever. Yeah. Oh, I guess we should hand this back. Because at this point, like, I think I played okay despite having a worse position. If anything, having the worst position seems to motivate me a little bit. But by the time, like, it... yeah strong uh, considered it in a money game I likely would um, yeah in a game where like something of strong value well even a Santa uh, <laughs> probably would if more than rating points were on the line. But this is the tipping ladder. Uh. <laughs> uh. So I felt it important to play out something else. I was uh, surprised you didn't uh, allow uh, promoted bishop takes rook. Yeah. Yeah, the rook and bishop are pretty similar in value. I was scared. You got a lot of pieces to attack with. It's not easy. Oh. Hmm. I mean, that's one way to think about the game, but I'll I guess I'll keep that in mind for my next encounter. Just get a position where I can threaten my opponent's lance. <laughs> uh I expected you to uh, move the rook. It's too late now. Uh, and at this point, I should have like stopped pursuing the rook. Because I have it. It's mine. It's not leaving. And even if it isn't mine, for him to activate the rook, he'd have to exchange rooks. It's like... This, I should have counted as everything I needed there. There was no need for me to do that. I wasted so much time here. That's bad. It was so bad. I just always... I mean, even here I should have done this. Oh, sorry. Even here, I should have done this. <sighs> yeah. 
Yeah, I had a game about two weeks ago where I missed the same idea. Actually, it was not two, it was, I think, three. And then Destiny was so kind to point it out to me after the game. And, like, yeah, it makes sense. It's a very strong defensive move. Even here, completely different position, same move still applies. I should find that. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, as, as fun as it is to have the rook, it's you don't want to lose your king over this sort of thing. I just this has got to be such a hard throw. I don't know how I managed it. Uh, but I did. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the game. Yeah, likewise. I don't really have a whole lot to add here. Uh, uh, nice attack at the end. It really worked out. Yeah, maybe after the bishop drop. I thought about it, but like, the point is, I should never have allowed any of this. It was bad. Like, there was certainly no need for me to immediately take the rook. <laughs> well, I'll give you credit for it. He played well. He surprised me. But my goodness, I feel like such a dope for the way that game ended. Alright. So, yeah, I hear at Llama Lord's point, like, yeah, this night drop probably would have done something. Like, basically anything other than what I did was probably decent, but yuck. It's good to play these teaching ladder games, because they really expose what you missed. So, in summary, one, you know, I should probably study this a little bit more. Not lose, like, five minutes in the opening every time I play this. Um, two, I think my pushing this pawn was slightly premature, and the way I followed it up with my knight was just no good. The uh, bishop move was interesting, and if I were to play this, this has to be followed up. This has to be the way to continue, and it's complicated, and I need to be okay with that. Um, Shogi's hard. It's okay for some positions to be complicated. What concerned me is this pawn might dissolve, and I might have to... I don't know, but if the pawn gets exchanged, that's fine. I don't know why I thought, like, I've seen quite a few other positions where my opponent gets a general here and a general there. That's really not happening here. Um, so yeah. I need to consider being a little more generous and opening lines for my pieces. I did at least spot this silver fork, so it was good that I prevented that. Dropping this pawn took my pawn out of hand. It was just painful. Um, so, an alternative could have been this. There's probably other stuff I could have done, but this is one clear, obvious plan. And the minute I start to execute on it, I probably get met with something like this. So, um,. At least I still have my pawn in hand, but yeah, the whole point is like my knight there is not effective. So 
I need to find some other way to generate some excitement. And actually, opening these lines does make the game exciting. Uh, this might have been something. I don't know. I like the idea of bringing my knight closer to the action, but my knight gets marooned in the center of the board, and it drops, and then my bishop drops behind it. So, yeah, I don't know. I briefly considered this, but figured, you know, this doesn't go anywhere. Maybe it does go somewhere. Hmm. Probably not. Yeah. Um. Anyway, the, this is the way the game proceeded. Uh, this was a waste of a move. Interesting. Um. Okay, let's read uh, the comment. What about instead of dropping a pawn, just... Oh! Okay. So, yeah. Somewhere around here, or the move prior. Um... Very good point. Yeah, there's these two pieces in the way, so he's got to go back to stop it. Oh! Oh, that is nice. Wow. Okay, wow. Jeez. That's even better than I thought it was. Okay. Yeah, I was... Ah, I was so confused this game. So, what surprises me is like, okay, we spend one, two, three moves pushing this pawn, only to threaten to push it again. Um... So there's a suggestion of a pawn drop here. Oh, okay. So it does not immediately win. Like, so yeah, they could drop this pawn and take some time to defend against my attack. So it's not instantly decisive, but this is still a good idea. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay, which makes me back up a bit and wonder, like, back here, I probably want to keep... Well, this pawn isn't even on this square. I thought it was. It's not. Um, yeah, so this is equally fast or slow as the other variation. Except this is going to take one more move to advance the rook and then bring it back. Um, yeah, so this makes sense. Okay, this is how you seize the initiative. After clumsily putting your pawn down here in the opening, you can actually push it forward. What surprised me is that, like, a knight jumps the entire span of the board in three moves, and then we could spend, like, four moves pushing the pawn, basically. And, like, somehow the pawn advance is so much more compelling than anything the knight could ever do. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, hmm. Apparently, sometimes... Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fair point. There's the yin and the yang. So if you're searching for the mate right in the opening, uh, the knight is the piece for you. I mean, I, I kind of like that, but yeah, I shouldn't ignore these ideas. Because, like, now he's got to spend a turn doing something. I don't know, he does something, let's pass, and then I push, and let's pass again, and now we take, and now he's got a choice between this or that. And if he takes the rook, well, it's a lot harder this time around to deal with my shenanigans. 
<laughs> so, yeah, that's the point. Um, of course, he's not just going to throw away two moves like that, but it's hard to find good moves. Yeah, go pawn go. It's just incredible. Like, on a chessboard, it has eight ranks, and it's still really damn hard to get the pawn promoted. It takes forever. In Shogi, the pawn promotes on the seventh rank. That's a big difference. Um, imagine in chess if you were to promote a pawn on the seventh rank. Ah, that, that, that. It's going to take some rewiring for me to understand that. Yeah, it also starts on the third rank. Although, at least looking at the board, I can see where my pawn's at. But... It doesn't get a double pawn push, so the fact that it starts on the third rank might not change anything visually. But yeah, the fact that it promotes so close to your side of the board is so nice. So that, yeah, this pushing this pawn was the key idea. I completely whiffed on it. And had I seen this sort of thing, uh, then he would no longer have the pawn in hand. He'd have to drop it somewhere here. And, you know, we'd go on and play a game, and it would be less difficult for me to play. Maybe at some point I do manage to exchange these pawns and then drop over here. Maybe. You never know. Jeez. Well, it's a good thing that was a teaching ladder game. Yeah, I mentioned how, like, I seriously considered the repetition. And the only reason I didn't go for the uh, repeating moves indefinitely here um, is because I found one variation where it looked like I was not strictly worse. Um, yeah, I did not expect that move at all. Like, any attacking move here is what I expected, but he didn't want to give away the lance. But he's got a bishop silver and a knight in hand i would start attacking i say that would i i don't know but i really want to start attacking let me turn this board where's i can't hit the rotate port button well that's disappointing um i was gonna say let's set up the pieces the other way around and see if i can find anything but it's just, somehow to me, like, I've played half Mino Castle, I've pushed my edge pawns, so that's fine, but still, the weakness of Mino, or half Mino, is the head of the castle. There's gotta be some way to, like, hit these two points, um, and profit from it somehow. But maybe he's right. Yeah, our games are crazy, because we both like playing exciting moves, and he actually stands up to my nonsense and fights back. So, it's definitely a close game, and that makes it exciting. Yeah, maybe he's right about the lance. Maybe he doesn't have... So, yeah, there was no need for me to push this. I mean... I don't even know. This is sidelined. I was concerned it was going to re-enter the game. I could wait until after this pawn pushes and then react. There was no need to do anything at this time. On the other hand, um, finding a constructive move is kind of hard here. I did mention how clever I was during the game for doing this because it helps me promote and then get my rook out. If I really meant that, then this would be the time to push the spawn. And then I could push it again, and then again, and then take the lance or something. Like, I don't even need this rook. But, um, I keep fixating on him having some sort of attacking chances here, and I'm just not seeing it. Yeah, I guess that's what time pressure does. Just makes me react in ways that don't always make sense. 
So for so many movies in a row, he was concerned about me taking this lance. And I considered pursuing it here, but then I saw he could just chase down my horse, and I don't actually win it. So I did see that. So yeah, I just struggled to find a good move here. Trapping the rook, at least going this far, is probably fine, but they say when you find a good move, look for a better move, but I'm just not seeing a better move. Well, hang on. I've got the square covered, don't I? If the square is covered, then I can just push here, then push here again, and that's promoted. This is what you were all talking about, but you just need to go after the king. Um, I just like using both my bishop and rook to do so. My rook feels so left out of this, but um, maybe I don't need it. If he drops the bishop, okay, and we don't exchange bishops, so say if we do this. And I elect not to exchange here. Um, hmm. Well, do I have a move? What do I do? Like, the one other piece I wanted to use to attack was this, but I can't do that right now because this is under attack. Uh, 6-3. Well, I'm sorry, not there right now. Um... Oh, this one. Sorry, you meant here. 6-3. My mistake. Not 3. Yeah, I thought you, for some reason, I thought you were inverting the coordinates 3-6, and I'm like, well, no. No, this 6-3. Um, yeah, so I was concerned about this and seeing this, but um, for the time being, I control that square. Still, like, I saw this far. Um, hmm, I don't know. Maybe this is okay. Yeah, I... Uh, it's tricky. Uh, thankfully, he does not have a gold in hand, so... Otherwise, I would have some difficulty defending this. I mean, this is crazy doing it this way, but... Um, I just keep trying to figure out, is there some way he can hack down my castle? I think I survive. So maybe that's not right. Maybe taking the pawn is wrong. Yeah, I guess this is a possibility if I don't exchange. And it just requires a lot of care from both players here.
Now the weakness in this castle is supposed to be the head. There's no need to pursue it from the side. Um... I mean, the reason I like this pawn drop is it prevents an, uh, me from doing the pawn drop there. Silver 4-2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 here. Yeah. That looks sensible. I'm sorry. No, that's not 4-2. What am I thinking? 4 twos down here. The other two. Yeah. This one. Right. Okay, because I don't have my gold here to stop that. So, yeah, this threatens my gold general. Yeah, okay. That's the move. Hmm. I guess... Hmm. Even if I do a pawn drop here that... Oh, never mind, that's illegal. But even if it were illegal, it still wouldn't be any good. Um, so I have to attack. I can't pawn drop on any file. Um, yeah, this is hard. Yeah, no... I think your coordinates are good. It doesn't help that, like, the way this layout works. I've experimented with it a lot, but I can't get the coordinates to show under the board in the stream layout. I just don't have the wherewithal to change this layout enough to get the coordinates to show below the board. And I'm struggling to recall which is which here. But no, I think since we're doing it from Gota's point of view, it's just like chess. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, two here. Um, that's fine. Yeah, this still the silver drop looks strong. I can't really. I kept looking, trying to smash the head of this, but no, like, here, all my pieces have taken a vacation away from my king, and there's enough pieces attacking that, like, this has got to result in a strong attack. So whether you do this drop right now, or whether you play this first, um, intending to follow up like that, like, yeah, my king is getting flushed out. My attack is just too slow. So yeah, I think that's... Um, I think this bishop exchange offer is reasonable for him here. But yeah, there's no need for me to push this. Like, my goal is to trap the rook. Fine. It's trapped. I could be afraid that somehow it's going to escape but fear isn't going to solve anything. Uh, if I'm that afraid of it escaping, maybe I do exchange my bishop for it, but I'm not afraid. I just need to activate my pieces. So I missed one opportunity in the opening to do that. Um, and possibly there's other stuff in the opening too, but or after the opening, like here. This was my golden opportunity. And the point is that if he takes here, the sacrifice is fine. Um, I thought this would promote. It doesn't promote there. It's probably still fine, but it's, yeah, not as easy as I pretend it is. Yeah, yeah, that was the other main problem, is that I just let this attack happen. 
There was no need for me to be so grossly irresponsible about this. Um, so yeah, right here. There we go. Attack over. That's it. I mean, here it's even more obvious than in my other game where I got chopped down on the fourth file. Yeah, this is all I needed to do. He can't bring enough pieces to support this attack. Uh, my horse covers a lot of squares here. My knight and lance cover a lot of stuff. My silver is actually kind of useful. It would be nice to have another general back here. That was certainly true. But given how light his attack is, like, I can't imagine me losing this. Maybe I just don't have an imagination. Maybe he actually has something here, and I'm just BSing the whole time. But I think I'm fine. Like, Llama was saying, how about this? This covers even more squares. So, like... There's no need for me to let this attack get so out of hand. It's just so irresponsible. Yeah, like if I take the rook and I promote my rook, then I have a really nice attack going, but I need to like calm down for a second and do something about my opponent's very real threats here. Um, maybe they have this anyway. Maybe this actually doesn't end the attack. Shogi is complex. Maybe I just need to practice more Sume. So this doesn't actually end it. Okay. Huh. Oh, thank you. Thanks for your support. Um... What if I sack the rook for two silvers in this variation? Oh! Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I forgot. I have a rook, don't I? <laughs> uh, well, that's something. That's a thing. Yeah, so, okay, the variation we were just looking at. Um, I'd be damned if I could recreate it. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, what was it? Silver promotion instead of gold drop. Sento still attacks. Silver, 7-2. Yeah, here. Oh, right. Yeah. So this was the variation we were just looking at. So you're asking, what if we do that? Um, yeah, sometimes still attacks. They like put the rook down somewhere and the gold down on the other side. And they get the rook out here and start using that. And like, it's not quite enough. Um... Yeah. So I don't think taking the silver here is quite enough, but maybe there's some other way. Like, how about that? Do they even promote here? 
I'm going to say promoting doesn't look correct. I mean, maybe it doesn't even matter, but here the key is attacking this square. Well, no, they have a silver in hand now that due to this... I was looking at the hand here, and I'm like, there's no silver. Promoting deck serves no purpose, but now they have a silver. So, yeah. Also, they have a bishop. So that is a threat mate, so I have to respond to it one way or another. Uh, what would Bogyoku do? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but still. It's a, it's a threat mate. If we respond this way, things don't get much better. Well, this is one square further away, but if my rook moves, he gets a free tempo. Um... Yeah, I have to take it. So then we get this, and like, good luck. Maybe it's survivable, but each position's unique. Um, some positions are harder to defend than others. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, we could go back here. And I don't know. Uh, they might as well promote now. And yeah, we could attempt to defend, and like each time we attempt, they'll get one step closer. If I go back here, they just hit this again somehow? No. I don't know. Looks difficult. I mean, taking the rook would be nice. Actually, yeah, I have time to take the rook. Yeah, go back to where I just um, let him promote the knight. Oh, where was that? Here. Evidently, here's where I just allowed a knight promotion. Uh, let's go back a bit further to the first night promotion. That's a way back. Wow. That is way, way back. Oh! Oh. Jeez. That was like 50 moves ago or something. Uh, not exactly, but yeah. I mean, the knight has already promoted at this point, but still. Like, that promoted knight is strong. When did that happen? Back here. So, if I had foreseen all this, um, uh, one reasonable way to respond is this. And, like, now the bishop can't support the knight promotion. That would have been pretty reasonable. Um, at this point, what are my options? At this point. Oh, taking the knight. Yeah, I actually considered this briefly during the game, and I'm like, wait, my bishop's trapped, my bishop's trapped. It's not trapped. Not even close. Yeah. Taking the knight. I considered this and was not thinking clearly at all. Uh, this makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah, other pieces are still going to promote here, but at least I won't have to deal with a promoted knight. Um, ship takes pawn. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. No, the other knight taking the knight. I'm sorry. Knight takes knight. Wait, what? Um. No, I'm sorry. I'm misreading our chat history. I re- I've contextualized all this. So yeah, I need to capture. 
this here piece before it gets too far up the board. Yeah, somehow this mishmash of tactics just confused me. But this is necessary. And now suddenly I have an active bishop. And so he goes back and, like, we play a game. And I've survived. This makes so much more sense. Oh boy, your time has come. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, yeah, that should be exciting. Knight takes four seven. Yeah, yeah, that's an idea. I was looking at this. Uh, I don't have any other ideas, so that looks pretty nice. And it opens up, like, this sort of stuff. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. But you probably want to keep the knight in hand and do something like this instead. Um, wait, silver 3-6. All right. 3 <laughs> Uh, um, we get tactics here, don't we? We get tactics. So, like, yeah, this is doable. Maybe this is playable. Maybe the bishop just goes somewhere and you just let the knight hang. I don't know. It's interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is... Maybe. I don't like parting with material, but I can grow up. <laughs> Maybe. Uh... I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, we've seen that a promoted knight can be good, and we do get a golden hand. I don't think my position is this desperate, though. I think I can afford to do this. Is it desperate? Well, I mean... Am I not just, like, punching very hard here? Oh, there's another fork. Why is there always a fork? Then there's a counter fork. Um, I just get the sense that here I'm dominating. And I don't get the sense in that other position. Hmm. But no, this is actually pretty solid, isn't it? For his castle. I mean, I see that I could chase his rook back and forth all day, and I could drop a knight and maybe hit something if I get lucky. Um, but also, he has just one silver in hand. And I really don't see where that goes. And so if he doesn't have an attack, I'm feeling pretty good about this position. Um, maybe he has an attack. I don't know. Maybe that's not really an attack. Um, yeah, I guess, what about bishop 5-3 promotes? So we're going to go back. Oh, here, this bishop 5-3 promotes. Right, the real 5-3. Um, mm hmm. Well, I can't drop pawns anywhere. So my thought was that I was going to, like, promote here. Hmm. 
still threatening like a night drop here and then picking up the lance. This night drop is a waste. I shouldn't put it there. But still, there's got to be something. I think I'm still... Well, we should look at the other position and compare it. Because maybe you're right. Maybe he's far more active here than if I sacrifice some material. Uh -um. So yeah, we're considering... I mean, this is not the biggest sacrifice ever. And if we take, we have... A nice attack. Although, I I mean, these guys are still not very happy. He could still promote his bishop, but I get an attack then. Um, Yeah, it's actually hard for him to put these pieces somewhere close to his king. If he puts them too close, they kind of box his king in and trip over each other. And yeah, the fact that he doesn't have a knight... Um, he's got a bishop and a silver, and he's got another bishop and a silver attacking, and all his pieces move diagonally. That makes it hard for him to generate a strong attack. Uh, still, I... Somehow I struggle finding an attack for myself here. Yeah, I do have two pawns in hand, so this is a real idea that, like, one, two... Obviously, this knight's got to move out of the way somewhere first. So, yeah, with, like, three moves, I could set this up. I guess more importantly, if this file opens, my rook could use it. Pawn 5, 6, yeah. Uh, gets to the heart of this point that my rook would like to use the file, but it's not my file. Oh, I'm sorry, pawn 5, 6. The actual 5, 6. This one? Yeah. What? No, I'm sorry, you're saying for me this is my threat. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. I do have a move pawn 5-6 here. Um, so, like, potentially, I still think this is a decent move for them, but, yeah, I have an idea. And then I could do this and this. That's playable. <sighs> um... Uh, yes, he does, right? Or I have to stop it somehow? I can't really stop it. Maybe knight 6 4. Six, four. Yeah, so you're saying before this happens... Well, I have to take here first. 
Let me adjust this. And so we're going to make a threat while also trying to slow this down. Um, that makes sense. Yes, if he drops the pawn, we can respond this way. So, assuming he sees that, maybe he plays this first. He's got both bishops after all. It's not as if suddenly I'm going to get a bishop to attack him with. But, he doesn't want to give me the square either. So he's not doing that. How the hell does he defend this? Well, let's suppose he does this anyway. And we do this. Um, even that doesn't defend it. I mean, I need this golden hand if my attack is going to uh, succeed, but also this gold here kicks the bishop away and then my knight could take but there's no follow-up because I lose the golden hand. Uh, gold, six, seven, up here. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. The threat, I guess, is to take this pawn, which is supporting the silver, which is, um, etc. Holding this together. Um, okay, yeah, this is interesting. So this is a way to conduct an attack, even without a bishop, and with my rook doing nothing, it's still possible. Just have to aim at the weak points which in this case were this pawn, and then when the silver defends the pawn, this pawn, which is supporting the silver. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so this silver... I mean, something like this is necessary to defend this pawn, or they just have to have a really good attack. Um, hmm. Okay, but this, I think, all just goes to refute my idea of dropping the pawn here and slowly attacking. Where a faster attack would be better. Um, Now, this might not be the right idea. There's other pieces that could use the square to promote, but they have to do something um, which doesn't give me all day to set up an attack. Yeah. Yeah, now your point stands that, like, here we have such simple ideas one at a time, but each of them is pretty effective, too. If I could just spot where the weakness is here, um, and aim at whatever the weakness in the moment of the position is, then I'll be fine. It's like, here these two pawns are holding up his castle. We know that since they played this Mino, um, that the weakness is the head. So to aim at that, I'll need to get closer and undermine this gold. And if they voluntarily exchange it, so much the better for me. Um, and yeah, and then we can hit these pawns, which are no longer defended. So like, it's all logical. 
just have to know where to aim. Yeah, instead of chasing after material all day, because the king is an easier target to hit. I mean, I've found some tactics in previous games that win material over and over and over, but my position gets pretty dubious when I do that. So yeah, we need to just get more familiar <laughs> with all this stuff. Um... I mean, doing tons of sume practice, you'll eventually get exposure to um, lots of ideas that help you approach the castle. Or at least you'll see where the pieces belong in approaching the castle, because you need them on a certain square to mate. Okay, rook 5-1. Oh, I'm sorry, not here. I am not... I don't know what's up with me in notation right now. But this is the 5-1. Yeah, we've been here for a couple hours, really. Um, yeah, what about it? Okay, maybe this refutes my bishop promotion idea. I don't know. It's hard. Uh... Maybe not. Maybe it's fine. Maybe I call your bluff. But no, the bishop's... the horse is actually quite strong. So I don't want to give it away. Yeah. So we just want to go back. And then set up some stuff, and we're like threatening stuff and stuff and stuff, but um, but this gives me time to react. And even though I can't Nifu here, legally anyway, um, I still have time to do something. I could choose either between attacking ideas, like this sort of stuff, or... I could try something desperate to try to hold the defense together, which is just not going to work, but we can pretend it will. Yeah, there's so many possibilities in Shogi. Like, even this, like, super far away from the king, could gradually find its way back, but also in the interim block this uh, important diagonal near the king. But pawn 5-6, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Take this. Oh, we have another gold? Where did that come from? Okay. Um, yeah, here. Ah. <sighs> um, mm -mm. Yeah, I try to find crazy moves here. There's not a crazy move to win this. Kind of wish there were, because those are fun. But, yeah. Yeah, this holds up. Wow. Very cool. Huh. At least I think it holds. 
I don't know. I'm playing crazy nonsense at this point. But yeah, this is a more exciting, active way to play for sure. What about uh, Senta doing pawn 5-8? It's not right now. Not right now. Um, mm -hmm. It's back here. Uh, we mean 5-8 here, right? I mean, this looks playable. I'm not sure that pawn 5-8 actually stops anything. Oh, after the horse and rook exchange on 5-1. All right, sorry. Um... Yeah, that makes sense. There, now we're talking. Finally pulled something together. Yeah, with so many pieces getting traded, I just keep looking at attacking all day, but sometimes a quiet move. That's a very strategically placed pawn. can make all the difference. Yeah, I mean, sure. I can make a token. Um, at least as it stands right now. Yeah, actually. Well, no, they don't have a knight right now, do they? Um, I mean, you don't want to pass here. But also, my point is that you basically have to drop something here. Otherwise, the same tactic happens to you. Uh, so knight 2-4. Yeah, promoted knight. Well, wait, knight 2-4. Something. Silver 6-7. Finding a lot of fun ideas here. Um... I don't know. Oh, 8-4. Yeah. Um, well, I'm sorry, not there. I am... That's... Yeah. Sorry, we've been here like two hours. I'm being super dyslexic. Um, but yeah, against this... I'm pretty sure that this is a strong response with the idea that we're just going to take this and then drop a knight and try to checkmate. Maybe we take first? If I don't know. I mean, what good's an extra pawn in hand going to do them anyway? Hey, welcome. No, no, no. Knight takes then. Okay. Shows what I know. <laughs> uh, really? And a bishop drop. Okay. I mean, again, this shows what I know. What do I know? Yeah, we got a long analysis today. Probably not going to go more than another five minutes or so, because I want to break before my next game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a cool idea. Yeah. 
well, um, well, certain we all, certainly, we all know where to find this game. Certainly, many of these ideas are very good, if not in these positions and similar positions. So, like, it's still worth having the discussion, even if an engine's going to point out all the things that we missed. If and maybe they won't. Um, need to attack. Yeah. And the question isn't whether I attack or not. It's The question is, I need to attack this guy. This guy is the guy that matters. He's the easiest target. I keep aiming for everything else because, like, I don't know. I just keep thinking of Rook and a Bishop are so, so much infinitely stronger than every piece on the board. And that's just not the case. Like, if I promote a Rook, if I promote a Bishop... I can find tactics that work, although this game proved otherwise, but still. Um, yeah, I just need to aim at the correct target. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I get what you're saying, like, maybe we need to promote the token first and then do this capture, etc. I don't know. But, like, the point is, I need to aim for the king. And to aim for the king, I need to dismantle the castle. And to do that, I need to find where's the weakness of the castle. To do that, I need to practice more Sume. Because, yeah, it just always surprises me, like, how effective the knight is here, the bishop is there, the pawn is here. Like, it's because I don't practice enough. Yeah. Um... Uh, Rook and Bishop are great if you only have pieces near the opponent's king. Um. <laughs> yeah. Well, opinions will differ. I've been super slacking in Sume, so that's why I mentioned I need to do Sume, but maybe there's another way. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, let's take a look at the final position once more. There. Okay, there's the checkmate. This is how you want to use your pieces together. This is the way to do it. There's the target. They managed to find it. I didn't. This is how you do it. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I've got a dragon, and I've got a rook back here, and I'm, I have a bishop in hand. If this game would just go on another a thousand moves, I'm sure I'd find something. Yeah, but... <laughs> uh, point taken, anyway. So, thanks to everyone for helping with this analysis. Thanks to my opponent for the training game. And we'll see you all next time.